When we first moved to Japan, we didn't think that learning their recycling system could be so challenging. But oh boy, were we ever wrong. <laughs> but now, finally, after three years of living in Japan, I think we finally got it right and we could finally convey to you how to recycle and throw out your garbage in Japan. Look at this. Look, Look at, at this. this. Now, when you first move to Japan, whether you're in a house or an apartment, you should be given a kind of cheat sheet like this. And it'll be very specific to the area you're living in because it's not the same for everybody every single day. Now, I call this a cheat sheet, but really it's more like the periodic table of elements, but for garbage. This is so specific. If you want to throw out your rubber ducks and plastic guns, there's a day for that. If you want to throw out your spoons and forks and your cassette player, there's a day for that too. Not to mention things like floppy disks and MD disks because Japan is really into tape cassettes and CDs and records, but there's a special day for that. Now they leave you these blank spots up here because as I mentioned before, depending on the neighborhood you live in, pickup days will be different. So at the very bottom of the sheet, you find the neighborhood that you live in and then you follow the uh. element and say, okay, I'm in this neighborhood. Mondays are garbage day. And you fill it in so that you don't forget. This is like a lot of work. <laughs> that you have to do. And we definitely messed it up a lot. We lived in one place before we got our house and that had its own set of rules as well. And then we came to our house and we're like, it should all be the same, super easy. <laughs> it wasn't, we even got ding-dongs on our doorbell from our neighbors being like, hey guys, this isn't the right date for that. And we were like, oh. Oh, and if you don't have one of these and you live in Japan, you should be able to pick it up at your local city hall. Come join me at our recycling station. This Doot -doot. isn't all aboard. <laughs> all aboard the recycle train. This isn't provided to you by City Hall. So we went out to IKEA and we bought our own little system right here. This is a four drawer shelf, usually for toys, but this is where we throw all of our recycling. In the top left corner is where we have our plastics, our little bags, our bubble wraps. This section right here is where we have our plastic bottles. Do note though, you cannot throw a plastic bottle in its entirety here. Before you throw it in, you're supposed to rip off the label, put that in the plastic, take off the cap and put that cap on the plastic as well. The bottle has to be separate from the rest of the plastics. Yes, it is that serious. In the bottom left is where we have our aluminum, so any kind of cans from drinking uh, non-alcoholic juice uh, and cans of tuna. And Whoa, can we just talk about the amount of tuna that you have? Yeah, I eat a lot of tuna. I work out, I need tuna, I need protein, so what? Simon has sad meals where he just takes cans of tuna and he dumps it into a container and puts like half a teaspoon of mayo and a little sprinkling of dill and then like half an onion because he's Polish and he's his dad's son. I ask my parents a question. This is the dinner table that they eat at. Mm -hmm. Why does my dad have a bag of onions beside your chair at the dinner table? Please explain. I love onion. I love onion. And then he takes that tuna and he just eats it. I don't even dry. put it on bread. Do you even lift bra? Sometimes. And in the bottom right corner is where you hold your glass. So any kind of like glass containers from like musters that you might have had. Wine. Or any non-alcoholic wine. wine that you have that could also go in here. This is a family friendly channel here. So all of your glass goes in the bottom right corner. And that's not even the entirety of a recycling station. <laughs> Now this next section of recycling isn't the most glamorous. Any kind of loose papers you have, so junk mail or envelopes or even like milk cartons. Once you're done with your milk carton, you take off the little plastic top and you throw it in the plastic bit. Then you gotta rinse out your milk carton and dry it out. Afterwards, you pop it open so it's all flat. And in case you didn't know, they have little instructions on the side here. No missing children here. These are instructions <laughs> about how to throw out your recycling properly. You're supposed to split this open gracefully like this, right? With sheer elegance. And then this little plastic bit right here. Rip the shirt! <laughs> Recycling is so great! There you go. This goes with your plastic and recycling. This goes back in here. 
for the rest of your paper. They have to be thrown out in paper bags. So this is ours and we actually collect a whole lot of paper bags. Come with me to my paper bag corner. There it is. There. <laughs> There it is. We don't have any nice place for it, so we just jam all of our paper bags beside our fridge. So this is where we store all of our paper bags. Again, not the most glamorous. I'm sure that there's some contraption that's really good for storing these, but we haven't figured it out yet. And it's tough because these are tough to come by. There are plenty of times we have garbage and not enough paper bags. A lot of supermarkets don't actually give you paper bags for garbage. One does. Kino Kunya, we only shop there so we could get their paper bags every once in a while so that we could throw out our paper recycling. In fact, when we came back from our Canada and US trip, our luggage was mostly full of paper bags. We didn't even bring <laughs> souvenirs. We just like, hey, look at all these paper bags. We gotta bring them back with us. And we collect these for safety's sake in the future. Oh, paper bags are very important to recycling in Japan. Woo! I'm all hyped up, I'm all hyped up to talk about recycling, uh! Oh shit! Who's ready for some more cardboard? Who's ready for the big boy paper? Let's do this! Ooh. I'm not even done yet. As soon as your paper bag is full and ready to be thrown out on the designated paper day, you can't just leave it out on its own, you need paper tape to seal the bag shut. You could buy this at your grocery store. They have it along with the other bags and the twine and whatnot. We didn't even talk about the twine yet. I know what you're thinking. Am I really watching a video? where a guy is getting excited about twine for recycling? And the answer is yes, and we're not even close to being finished, so hold on to your underpants, this is gonna be a wild ride. And by wild, I mean as wild a video about recycling in Japan can be. Who's ready for some more cardboard? Who's ready for the big boy paper? Let's do this! So make sure that you close up your paper bag with uh, the paper tape. I do have a confession to make. This is actually the wrong tape. This is just brown duct tape that I've been using simply because I forgot to buy paper tape this week and we just recently ran out and I'm so ashamed and I hope that nobody knows. Look, you viewers, this is a secret between us. Don't tell anybody else, okay? I will buy paper tape today and this won't happen again. Just do as I say, not as I do, okay? Ugh. You gonna take that vinyl tape off? Yeah, this is just, this is just for demonstration's sake. I would never do this more than once, of course. Now where does this tape go? Oh my god. Is this garbage or is this recycling? Quickly! Tuck tape. Seven divides I into I think 30. this one has three carbon atoms. Five goes and into... And five. Northwest wind is coming at 70 kilometers an hour. Cave this Eight way. Is divided I by. think the I think blood moon. Now you'll probably blow through the clear plastic bags the most because you're gonna be using it for tin cans, for glass, for plastic bottles, and for vinyl. So things like plastic bags for containers, plastic bags from shopping, if your bananas for some reason were wrapped in plastic that one time. This is really easy to be like crushed down so you can fit a lot in here before you throw out your plastic. But you wanna make sure that if you have any food containers, you rinse that off before you throw it in here. It should be so clean that you can take your hand and just stick it inside and just ruffle it around and then pull it back out again and go, Smells like nothing. Maybe a tiny bit of soy sauce. Outside of tin cans, glass, and the plastic that I've already shown you, PET bottles go into their own bag. And here's a cool Japan recycling fact for you. Japan was one of the first countries to get on the PET bottle trend. I didn't know what PET meant until I looked it up, but it turns out that PET is a special type of biodegradable plastic that you can actually take and turn into something else. So you can turn it into polyester or other types of plastic bottles. And there are some companies in Japan that became the first companies to make uniforms out of the recycled bottles that they recycled from their company. Pretty neato. <laughs> Toot toot, all aboard the pain train. Next stop, boredom, or should I say, cardboredom. Boo. I'll be here all night with my lame ass jokes. All right, now you have a whole bunch of cardboard. We got this little like rolly stand right here that we keep in our little shame dump hole. Uh, <laughs> every house has their dump hole in which you store a bunch of crap that they don't know what else to do with. And we store our cardboard there. And once it finally gets full, then what you have to do is you start laying it out all flat. The first time that we tried to throw out our cardboard, I did it the North American way, which you like have one box and then you stuff a whole bunch of boxes within that box. I'm sure you've seen that before. Ah, the whole box stuffing. Right, 
but then our neighbor, our granny neighbor, rang on our doorbell the next morning. She had like twine and she had the paper tape and she's like, You didn't do it the right way. <laughs> Let me show you how. And my heart Shame. sank and fell out my anus. And now I'm never having that happen again. So I'm going to show you so you don't have to feel the same shame. You buy this little twine, which is a nightmare, mind you, because you got to pull it out from the middle here. And it always gets stuck on something. And there's always big clumps of it, like hairballs. You just got to cut around it. Fortunately for this roll, I've been very slow and meticulous <laughs> to not get this stuck. But we tie this up like so. Uh-huh. Roll that around, make a cut. He is so good at many things, like deciding the length. I can tell you right now that the real kitty is <laughs> very intrigued. All right, Candy, oh, stay away. What's that about? All right. So I tied up one side. Flippity doo dah, which is the accurate turn. And flip this over. Is really I'm really in interested in this. Ta-da! This goes out with your paper and your cans and your bottles and your used clothing and I think your explosives as well. <laughs> yes, there's a yes, there's a bag for that. Wow, we have we barely scratched the surface and we're recycling. We still got so much more to go. Perfect recycling example. So they've got this is a vegetable shop. Their boxes folded into other boxes. They put the styrofoam stacked and it's just beautiful piece of organized artwork. Now for all items that cannot be recycled, such as food waste, balls, aluminum foil, LPs, rubber products, photographs of friends and families and ex-lovers, and plastic containers that cannot be cleared. They go into a designated city garbage bag, which has to do with the particular little tiny city that you're in. You have to purchase those at a grocery store or the dollar store or even city hall. They have all types of sizes of garbage bags. The biggest one we've ever purchased are these big boy, ugh, so gigantic, 40 liter variety, which actually makes me laugh when I go back to Canada because normal garbage bags, I could probably get into them and like tie myself up in, but this is like such a big boy garbage bag for us. 10 of these cost about $8. Now on to our personal favorite garbage bag. Is it 20 liter variety? Ooh. This is what we use for our normal life. There's just two of us and a cat who poops a lot. So we have to use all of our waste into here. And honestly, it's not a very big bag if you look at it. Now, because we recycle so much, we really only fill one or two of these a week. And two would be maybe because we're throwing out a huge pile of cat poop and sand. But otherwise, we really rarely fill these up. We're usually like looking for things to put in it. We'll empty all of our garbage bins from our washrooms, all our Q-tips, all of our snotty nose tissues. So really we're like barely throwing out any garbage anymore, which I think is probably the whole point of carefully recycling to reduce your waste, right? After this, there is also a 10 liter bag, which we found a bit too small. Ah, uh, look. A dead battery. I need to throw this out. I guess I finally have use for this measly five liter bag. I'm going to throw this in here. <laughs> Stop you fool. What? You need to go to City Hall and buy the designated red explosive bag. It's, oh. it's so small. And then on one special day, you can bring it to the curb and leave it for the battery fairies to pick up. It's usually on the paper day. This batteries. actually isn't a dead battery. I'm going to put this back. We're going to put that back in. Everything in here is actually new battery. It's important. We can't actually show you what the red battery bag looks like because we just recently threw it out <laughs> and I just wish we would have planned this sooner. But anyways, it's the size of a black of a red. <sighs> now, some of you might have noticed that we actually have a new couch and the question is what happened to our old couch? Well, I had to call City Hall and set up a specific date for them to pick up the couch. When I set up that date, they asked for the exact dimensions of the couch. And when I told them that, they told me a specific sticker that I had to get. I don't know where to get that sticker. The people that helped us with moving the couch, they bought the sticker for me. But I'm guessing it's City Hall or convenience store. If somebody knows, please correct me in the comment section below. And then when it was finally time to pick it up, you leave your couch out on the curb with the sticker on it. And the special garbage people come and pick it up. And then you can avoid the sticker of shame. <laughs> Are you done? Our neighbors are doing I'm trying to do a YouTube. I think we're nearly done explaining all there is to know about recycling and garbage, but there's still more to know. And the decree from the king of recycling.
Recycling who states, the following items are collected free of charge. Leaves and branches of a maximum size of 50 centimeters in length by seven centimeters thick. When bundled together, the bundle's diameter should be 50 centimeters and, less, centimeters, less, and, and there less, is a limit of and three, there is a limit of three, three household households households per household household collection. Per if you're in your garden and you're cutting branches and cleaning the leaves and cutting the lawns, you can do three bags outside and they will pick it up for you on your garbage day. But if you have more than three, if you've got four, you have to hold that fourth one until the next possible time period that it can be collected or they will not collect it and they will leave you a sticker of shame. Twice a month they actually have designated non-burnable garbage days which for me doesn't make sense because I think everything is burnable if you try hard enough. This is when you throw out your glass panes, your pots or your light bulbs, your floppy disks, uh, your spoons and your forks or your paint cans and other such non-burnable items. Now I have a lot of respect for garbage men. In fact before my dad became a high school teacher he was actually a garbage man so I know that they work really hard but the garbage men in Japan seem to really hustle. When the truck is going down the street, there's one guy in the truck and then there's another guy that's sprinting ahead and he checks and collects the garbage and they're just like constantly hustling like super busy bees and they're really friendly and nice. They're not gruff or mean. If you're going by on your bike and you're kind of in their way, they'll pull everything off to the side and like smile and nod to you. It just seems like they're just so nice and they keep our city so clean. So thank you garbage men. We really appreciate what you're doing. When you've finally done all the right things and you've tied up your garbage in the right bag and you're ready to throw it out, in apartments they usually have a designated garbage area that you can leave it. But if you're living in your own house, usually you leave it on the curb. I do strongly advise when you put out your garbage, either put it in a garbage bin like this that has a lock on top or even some kind of the netting that you could put on top of it because of the crows. The crows in Japan do not mess around. They're huge, big, terrifying beefy monsters like pterodactyls that black out the sun. <laughs> we, there have been plenty of days that we've rode our bikes through garbage day and we've seen just the strewn car and we've seen just the strewn carcasses of garbage bags all over the streets because the crows will come and cruise and they will rip it up and they'll tear it up. The crows don't clean up after themselves and they will leave you with the mess to clean up afterwards and they will leave you with the shame that you will feel around your neighbors because you did not protect your garbage from the crows. Gee, my warning foreigner, learn from my mistakes. Actually, it never happened to me, but I saw it happen to other people. Look at the size of the locks on this thing. Let me also just say that I ran back afterwards after getting that footage because there's been, oh shit, they're here in front of my house. There have been some times that I've messed up the garbage and I have received a notice of shame and I don't want them to know what house is associated with me. So I'm hiding here, but I'm watching them from a distance. I hope they don't know where I live. Uh, what are you doing? It's garbage day for my village. So I am just cleaning up the village. It was getting a little bit on the bedraggled side. Is that so? Yes. You can see that there's dirt in front of my mushrooms here. Uh huh. So, just putting together the correct pattern. This poor duck, he was in such a dirty situation. It's a nice little tanuki you got there. Pink, he, he guards our house. What does he guard our house from? Other tanukis. Other tanukis. <laughs> For those of you that saw our video on Clever Japanese Packaging, we did read some comments about people being concerned about the vast amount of plastic being used, but I think that you can see that Japan really takes its recycling seriously here. If you haven't seen the video on Clever Japanese Packaging, I made a little playlist of other informative videos. You can click on the link here. And if you did find this video somewhat informative and useful, make sure you subscribe to our channels where we have more travel tips and more information about Japan to come. And lastly, for me, this system in Japan seems a little bit crazy and overwhelming but maybe in your country it's normal. I'm not sure. So please let me know in the comment section what it's like in your country, if recycling is the same, or if Japan just does go a little bit above and beyond when it comes to the garbage disposal.